So INR, International Normalized Ratio, is an important lab to talk about because you're going to see this quite a bit throughout your career as a nurse, as a nursing student. So what is INR? Is essentially a measurement that we use to test clotting times in patients. We have through in our clotting cascade, we have a, a couple different ways that clotting can occur. It can occur due to damage to the cell or external damage. And so what we do is we have INR and PT, and then we also have PTT to measure clotting times for these different clotting pathways. So PT and INR are used to measure prothrombin time. Okay. So essentially what will happen is we'll take a sample of blood from our patient and we'll add and we'll add tissue factor to that sample. What tissue factor does is it starts to initiate this clotting cascade and then we measure how long it takes for this patient this patient's blood to clot. And that is what the PT is. That's our prothrombin time. Now what INR does is it really standardizes this uh, prothrombin time because the, the method or the tissue factor that's used in different facilities and in different labs can be different. Okay, They might use it from a pig, they might use it from a cow, they might get the tissue factor. And because of the, that tissue factor is going to affect uh, clotting times, we use INR versus PT to kind of standardize based on what tissue factor we used. Okay, so does that make sense? We take our patient's sample, we add tissue factor to it, and that gives us our PT time, our prothrombin time. Now, but what we do though is we use our INR to standardize that time because based on the tissue factor we use from different animals or from different sources, it's going to give us a different PT, a prothrombin time. And so we use INR to kind of standardize that. And our normal value for INR is 0.8 to 1.2. And there's no unit with it. Now, if we have a patient who's on uh, Coumadin or Warfarin, the INR that we would expect for that patient would be about 2.0 to 3.5. Okay, and the reason is we want that blood to be a little bit thinner. So we'll put our patient, our cardiac patient, or we'll put our patient for whatever reason on Coumadin. And we want to extend that bleeding time just a little bit to kind of thin out their blood and slow the clotting time uh, for this patient to be therapeutic. So just as we just talked about, some things that are going to cause increased INR times would be a patient who's on uh, therapeutic drugs, things like uh, warfarin. Also, if they have vitamin K deficiency, vitamin K is the antidote to warfarin and vitamin K is going to cause clotting. So if they have a deficiency in vitamin K, we're also going to see prolonged clotting times or prolonged INR. Liver disease is also going to cause it or a disseminated intravascular coagulation or DIC would also cause extended uh, clotting times or INR. When would we see decreased levels? If we have too much vitamin K, our blood is going to want to clot more. Also, estrogen containing medications like birth controls can also cause decreased INR. And what does that mean? That means our blood's going to clot faster, and that can actually be detrimental. We really don't want uh, our blood to clot too easily. Uh, that can be dangerous um, and lead to things like stroke and heart attack and things like that. So the reason, like I said, that we give it is we really want to assess therapeutic doses of, of Coumadin. We also want to identify patients who are at risk for bleeding. So if we have a patient coming in for surgery, we're going to run these bleeding times, our PTINR, our APTT, and we want to see how long it's going to take the patient to clot. If it's too long, then we need to do things to try to make sure that they aren't going to bleed uh, during a procedure. 